so it seems that mixing regiments is in. Heavy weapons are rebranded as field ordnance batteries, but veteran teams and special weapon squads might be gone entirely. Let's talk about some juicy rules rumours for the new Imperial Guard Codex. Hey hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd cover a rumour that's been going around for the past week or so. Basically a whole bunch of details from the new Guard Codex, shared by a supposedly fairly reliable source on Discord, and then reposted around the internet on all sorts of different places. As Guard players will be acutely aware, Codex Astra Militarum is the last one of the 8th edition ones to be redone, and it does indeed look like it's going to be coming after the Leagues of Botan. So far we have got a few model leaks and a few rules hints, though really not all that much. This is definitely the biggest rumour cluster that we've had drop so far. Models wise it does seem that a lot of things have been fairly heavily confirmed by the amount of rumours going around. There might be more than this, but the kits that have been mentioned so far are a few HQ units, the new Ursula Creed model, a Commissar and a new Command Squad, for vehicles a new reimagined Sentinel and a Rogal Dawn battle tank, and quite a lot of new squads in a new infantry kit of some sort a new Kazakin kill team kit, new heavy weapons, and rough riders. There have been so many hints or leaked images that the vast majority of those are pretty much confirmed to my mind, but it's always possible that there might be more. I'm sure a few other collectors of other regiments will quite like to see some things realised that aren't just Cadian. Perhaps Vostroin's or Valhallen's redone Death Corps style would be very nice indeed. Otherwise, for rules rumours, we had a batch dropped by Simply Warhammer, another YouTube channel, around about four months ago. Just a few little random teasers there, supposedly those Rogal Dawn battle tanks will be a bit heavier than the Ross, around 15 or 16 wounds and toughness 9, a characteristic that Games Workshop seems to be letting out the bag a bit more towards the tail end of 9th edition. For Rosses, supposedly tank commanders become ballistic skill 4+, they get plus 1 to hit on their turrets and can fire out of combat even if locked up. He said that Death Corps are in the Codex and a playable regiment, though I guess that was always going to happen, seeing as they actually released plastic models for them, and they aren't just a Forge World regiment anymore, and supposedly Death Strikes are massively reworked, 3d3 mortal wounds within a 6 inch radius once the missile hits, and rewritten firing mechanics, a few really quite cool teasers there, all of it seems at least fairly plausible. Over the last week or so though, there's been a bunch more rumours circulating around, these were posted to the Bolter and Chainsword forum, after being posted on a Gene Steeler Cult Discord, Supposedly the rumours are from people who have been accurate in the past, though obviously until you see anything in print from Games Workshop anything could change. They do seem rather plausible to me, but it's always possible that they might have had access to an early version of the playtest rules. As with the Demons Codex, a fair few things changed between the playtest versions and the actual Codex release. In any case, let's get into it and start out with arguably the bad news. In that according to these leaks, a couple of key options for the Imperial Guard are just completely gone, namely the veteran squads and special weapon squads. They've been a thing for the Imperial Guard basically as long as I can remember. The veterans team having more access to different special weapons and a heavy weapon and a heavy flamer, and the special weapon team is generally being six guys, with three of them getting either melter or plasma, grenade launchers, flamers or snipers. Depressingly, this would kind of fit in with what Games Workshop has done to certain other codexes, Anything that didn't have a specific model kit that they sold basically gets axed, say for example the Chaos Space Marine Lord with Jump Pack, and I guess these guys haven't really had an official Games Workshop kit support for basically as long as they've existed. If you want to make veteran teams and special weapon teams, you basically have to combine bits from command squads, the regular infantry, and maybe heavy weapon teams. There's no box that Games Workshop sells that just says special weapon squads and comes with tons of options. In that leaked image, it did show that we're getting at least some new Cadian infantry. These guys lurking in the back do appear to have at least some special weapons in them, though it isn't really clear exactly how many there are in the squad, and the model picks are super blurry. They are new infantry of some sort or another, though they could just represent an updated sculpt for the standard infantry squad, as opposed to these special options. It really does feel like a pretty good kit win for them though, they could create a kit that either builds veterans, or maybe a special weapon squad, and I think it would be very sad if they do wind up removing them from the codex. I would also bear in mind that the kill team option for the Krieg, that is actually called Veteran Guardsman. I guess to be fair it doesn't come with any sort of spam special weapons though, just one version of each. So even with that quite big and detailed kit, I'm a little bit questionable as to how much it would actually guarantee the survival of veterans as their own data sheet. In any case, I'd really hope that that isn't true. It's quite fun to be able to field their own individual units like that. I guess we'll have to wait and see. The other maybe slightly annoying rumour for seasoned guard veterans is that infantry squads may well be losing access to heavy weapons within the squad. 
Previously, you'd always be able to run them with, say, eight guardsmen and then one heavy weapon team with an auto cannon or missile launcher or something. But apparently, the loss of the heavy weapon team will be replaced by a second special weapon. It has maybe been a little bit clunky to have the weird arrangement of one massive based heavy weapon alongside the rest of the squad, but that is the way that it's worked in the game for absolutely ages. And again, it just feels something that doesn't feel quite right for the tradition of the guard. I guess perhaps the motivator for this one is that in the leaked heavy weapon team picture, it looks like we're getting newer, bigger, badder heavy weapons that we'll get onto in a second. And if they are larger models managed on bigger bases, it might make them even more weird looking to include in infantry squads. Again, might mean that you need to rejig armies just a little bit. This change would go against certain kits that they sell at the moment, including the Brood Brothers kit for the Gene Stealer Colt. That one comes with an infantry squad and heavy weapon. And also the current Guard Start collecting box, which will be replaced by a combat patrol. And again, we'll get onto the rumoured contents later. Again, speaking of heavy weapon squads, the blurry picture of which we have seen here, apparently they're going to be rebranded as a Field Ordnance Battery maybe going a little bit further to being more sort of artillery pieces, and perhaps a bit slower to pack up and move around the board. It's perhaps a little hard to judge from this picture exactly how big or imposing they're looking, but I would guess that they're a little bit bigger and chunkier and more dangerous looking than the previous ones, and supposedly they'll be getting three different main weapon choices, either bombast field guns, I think the autocannon equivalent, a malleus rocket launcher, I guess the one on the left, and some sort of heavy las cannon, my guess would be that that would be the one on the right, unless that's a heavy bolter of some description. Those were the ones that were mentioned, but it's not impossible it might come with more options on the kit. Hopefully they would have options for things like mortars, otherwise anyone with mortar teams might potentially have them rendered obsolete. At least on the positive side, if this is true, it sounds like the weapons might get some slightly amped up stats. Perhaps bigger, higher calibre versions of the standard weapons that you might get mounted on the sides of tanks and things. Damage and defence creep in 9th edition has just meant that these guns just aren't super standout, meaning that the heavy weapon teams are very cheap indeed. Hopefully they might increase the durability a little bit as well. It is a bit disappointing when they get taken down by something like a stray autocannon shot, and you lose some powerful heavy weapons for next to no effort on the opponent's part. Moving on, there's some teasers on regiment rules, and from the teasers here it sounds like regiments might not be just being standard chapter tactics like they are for virtually every other army. The exact rules that your whole army gains won't necessarily be locked to, say, Cadians or Cathchans or anything like that. That will be a bit of a departure from the norm from Games Workshop. Throughout most of 8th and 9th edition, all the sub-factions have got their own benefits. But I can see a strong motivation for making Guard a special case to that. Unlike, say, Space Marines where you just paint them in a different colour, the Guard regiments actually have different appearance models, a lot of which they don't actually sell. So it's a bit weird to kind of lock rules to the different appearances of models, even if lots of people just use, say, Cadians or Castachans and run them as different regiments if they want to. I'd be absolutely amazed if the Guard didn't have some sort of selectable army-wide chaps tactic style trait though. Maybe it just might be something that you pick from a list to represent the actual company that you're fielding perhaps, as opposed to the regiment that they're drawn from. I guess you could in theory have a Cadian armoured company that would function very differently to an infantry company maybe. That's all just speculation on my part though. According to this league, apparently there wouldn't be anything to stop you mixing and matching regiments within one force, say have some squads be Kastchan and some squads be Cadian, and however the army rules actually shake out, this wouldn't give you a big disadvantage or anything, and might actually give you some advantages, such as being able to use certain stratagems slightly more powerfully. I think this is something that was on the wish list of quite a lot of guard players, seeing as in the lore it's at least relatively common to have different regiments working together, say an infantry regiment from one planet working alongside an armoured company from a completely different part of the galaxy. Normally you're no longer allowed to do this in match play 40k, currently you can't field say Iron Hands allied to Ultramarines for example, so this will be a special case for the guard, but I guess if you're not mixing two different chapter tactics then it isn't the end of the world. Otherwise a few other hints that they said are that the main draw to running different regiments is that you get boosted versions of different stratagems such as vicious traps for cast chans as we'll get on to. And there were a few other little bits, also confirming that Krieg are very much in the book. And they also mentioned that Cady and Kazakin would get the new army-wide trait rules, plus also getting an extra Stormtrooper thing for exploding sixes to hit. I think I'm picking the exact rules and how they work is going to be pretty interesting with this. If these rumours do turn out to be accurate, I think it could be quite fun to have different traits based on whether you're taking 
an infantry company, stealth experts, a tank company, or an artillery squadron maybe. And one benefit of having powerful rules not locked to one individual regiment would mean that you don't have to feel bad about using your Krieg as Cadians if the rules just make more sense, for example. It'd go some way to putting the regiment on a pretty even playing field. Talking of regimental stratagems, they did give one interesting example of the Katachan's vicious traps reimagined. Quite a specific breakdown of how this one works. Currently, it's a stratagem that you can only use if you're Katachan, though these rules here would imply that you could use it even if you're not Katachan, and that if you just happen to be Katachan or have a gorilla's trait, whatever that might be, you just get a bonus to its effectiveness. Apparently, you spend XCP when the enemy charges a unit in terrain. You roll a d6, getting plus 1 to the roll if you're Katachans or Gorillas, plus 1 to the roll if your opponent has a Melter Mine, a further plus 1 if Sly Marbo's about, and extra plus 1s for each extra CP expended. If you roll a 2 to 5, the enemy takes d3 mortal wounds, or if you roll a 6 plus, then they take 2d3 instead. I guess depending on how many of those benefits you naturally have in play, that could be quite powerful. 2d3 mortal wounds to a charging unit really would thin their ranks a bit before they get to hit you. Again, I am pretty curious as to how these new regimental rules might work, and how you unlock stratagems like this, or whether or not they're just going to be army-wide. Finally, the League also mentions some details of the Guard Combat Patrol. Of course, as it's a 9th edition codex release, they'll be getting rid of the old start collecting box, and coming out with a new kit that's designed to be played at 500 points. Apparently in this one, there'd be a Cadian Command Squad, some Cadian Shock Troops, they didn't say how many, a field ordnance battery and a new sentinel. At least judging from the rough points or power level that I'd estimate from these, even if the sentinel and the heavy weapon teams cost far more, I'd still guess that you'd probably need at least two sets of Cadian shock troops to make that into a combat patrol box set, so hopefully it could be at least a fairly generous amount of guard minis. From the leaks that we've seen, it sounds like most of these should be new kits. The Cadian command squad, field ordnance and the sentinel all would be. And it does make me wonder whether or not they're actually going to replace the Cadian shock troops with the new infantry that we saw in the leaked image, or if they would be representing things like veterans or special weapon squads. In any case, I think that this would be a pretty good combat patrol. A light vehicle, some heavy weapon support, a good number of infantry and a command seems pretty ideal for starting guard to be honest, particularly if all of them happen to be new shiny new plastic kits that might be in quite a lot of demand for newer and veteran players alike. I guess the only thing that I might have wanted to change is it might have been better to swap that Sentinel for a Lehman Ross. It is quite nice to get one discounted in the current start collecting box, as it is one of the most iconic units of the guard. Finally, and the last rumour of the whole set, is that apparently command squads are always going to be fielded with the officer attached now. They won't be running around independently. And while that might leave us a little bit less flexibility of our commanders zooming all over the place with move, 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 it has kind of felt that the rest of the command squad is a bit of an afterthought, and the commander's the only real valuable bit. The command squad just doesn't really do all that much at the moment, unless you're spamming special weapons, or using a single banner to do certain secondaries. It would just feel a little bit more appropriate if the commander was actually leading the force with the command squad, rather than just completely ditching them. So anyway, let me know what you think of these rumours. Does this make you more or less excited for the guard codex? And how likely do you think that these are actually going to be accurate? I'd say most of them seem at least fairly plausible on paper from the way that Games Workshop has released 9th edition codexes, but there's always the possibility that they might be early rule sets, or just someone making stuff up given that their text leaks without any backing. Still though, pretty interesting stuff, a few little teasers to tide us over till we actually get some news of the codex. I'll most certainly be covering any interesting rules updates that we see here on the channel. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to keep up with any news of the Guard Codex. Finally, before I go, I'd just like to mention the channel's Patreon page, which is what allows me to keep on making these videos quite so often. Making all the content each day does take a fair amount of time and effort, and if you are enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.